the reason for the, the boom whackers is it's, they're easily accessible. I mean, the, they fit into any school budget. Very few schools right now in our board have a, a full instrumental program. And because of that, you kind of have to be resourceful. We were using boom whackers. They're pretty much long tubes, different size, to make a different note sound. The main focus of the lesson was to introduce students to the concept of notation. And prior to that, it was introducing them to the idea of duration, that element of music. How many beats or how many pulses does that whole note get? Four. Excellent. How long is our half note? Two. Excellent, thank you. Quarter note, one beat. An eighth note, it's half of one beat. So the very top one here. It's a whole rest and it lasts the whole bar. It would always last four beats, excellent. Really important to review this at the beginning of every class for maybe five minutes, just so students um, become familiar and it becomes part of their music vocabulary. We'd then take one of the boom whackers and we'd work through um, the beats and rhythms um, as a class. So if we were to do one, one, two, three, and four. What's on beat four? Yes, sir. A quarter note. Okay, good. When we do those ostinatos is we want to look at the idea of combining more than one pitch. So when we looked at this one example here with the red, we're looking at one particular pitch or one voice. When you guys go to write your own compositions, you're going to be using four to five voices. An ostinato is um, one or two bars that continuously repeats itself over and over again. Kind of a way to introduce all these different elements of music to students who maybe have no prior knowledge. I kind of like music. I'm not a huge, like, I'm not into music that much. I don't like go to concerts and stuff, but I like making my own music and it's a fun experience. The student with no prior knowledge can create something that is of the same caliber as the student who maybe has taken piano lessons for the past five, ten years. My biggest thing for them is always compose first or kind of create first and write second. So find something that you like and then later try and put that down to pencil and paper. Today we were working on how to put music from your uh, head onto paper and also how to like mix music like and uh, try to get it to all flow together. I'm going to break you off into groups of maybe four students, okay? You're each going to get two different pitches come up with a very simple one bar um, rhythm that uses two different pitches. Can you have them playing at the same time? All the time. No, because then it would sound like a hot mess or something really bad. Yes, it would. That's excellent. You're right. I think it's important for them to work in groups um, and not just independently because there's different levels of musicality within the classroom and it's good for them to kind of feed off of each other. I like doing it in a group because you get everyone's input and like different ideas, so you don't have to think of it all by yourself. And um, kind of gets you to practice working with people. We usually feed off of someone else's ideas, so if he, he would say something, I would add on to it. And we're always like that, so. I want you to layer that sound. I want you to think sort of vertically, too, not just one voice and the next and the next. So go too fast or too slow, and then Mike couldn't get the right beat. So yeah, it's hard to mesh all the sounds together and get it nice so it actually sounds good instead of just a hot mess. I think it's really interesting. They've come up with their own six part ostinato, and they're breaking everything down one voice at a time. And again, um, they're using those techniques that we talked about with slowing down the rhythm to half its original speed. And then there's also that idea that they're counting out what they're playing. So they're using the beats and they're counting them out to then further um, make the notation, I guess, a bit easier. We were working on the development of our ostinatos. And we were just trying to 
find different pitches we could use and different sounds to make make an ostinato that fits together. So you just keep playing and you experiment. Not only have they decided they didn't like the sound of one pitch, they, they switched. Um, I think it's neat how they're trading off with the writing. And also, um, there's a bit of coaching going on. Like, I, I can write it, but you need to slow it down for me, or we need to kind of work through that rhythm. So, uh, for me, that's very rewarding as a teacher, because they've actually kind of put into practice what we've been working on for the past six weeks. Part of that creative process here that we talked about before, was after you've planned, after you've experimented, what you then want to do is you want to produce that preliminary work and you want to revise it at some point. And there's no point right now in revising it unless you've sort of played it for people, gotten some feedback, okay, both from me and then also your peers. We came up with my beat first, but then after we did that, I kind of start, kept playing it and then we tried to get stuff coming into yeah, it. Yeah, we want to get me and Colin's mix and then, Colin, and then Mike's didn't mix, so we tried to make Mike, Mike's like go together so it sounded good. One, two, three, four, one, two, three, four, you have one, two, three, four, one, two, okay. So don't go any faster than that quarter pulse. He's got that one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four. That's the pulse you want going on in your head. Everything that you're doing is correct. You're just playing a little bit, you speed up a little bit when you get to those halves. When you go to perform something, you are probably always going to be way faster than you need to be. So if you're, if you're doing it and you find it's too fast, just, just stop and try it again. It's not a big deal. Okay, that's why we're doing it now as opposed to, you know, next week. Okay, I want you guys to kind of get those jitters out. I want you to get that performance idea done so that you're not so nervous when you actually go to be, to be marked. For this triplet year, it used to be just a single note, but I thought that, that was kind of too boring, so we made it a triplet. You wanted to make it pulse. sound a little more interesting. So, so what did you have about a quarter and you turned it into a triplet? Yeah. Okay, I usually had just like, a double note and then a single note, but I changed it into a double note since he changed it into his triple note. Excellent, good. Really, really good. I like the revisions you made. That idea, keeping those eighths consistent, really, really good idea. Really, really good. Me and Steven were thinking of using the E and a B as our thing, but when we played it, it didn't really match to the other two that Steven was playing, so we thought of changing it to a higher two. Can you show me the difference between the two? Go ahead. I think the ostinato was important. I think it was a, a vehicle for the students, in a sense. Um, you can tell them we're going to go and create a piece, and their interest might kind of wane a little bit. But I think if you tell them that it's something that they've never experienced before, if it's something that maybe is new, it kind of has that sense of novelty to it. My group in the corner, can I? Can you first of all maybe tell me if you've revised anything since? So they told me I need to slow down, try and keep up with them. I'm just like, okay. So, yeah. I'm going to stop you there, one second. It, it, it's going to sound good. The, the notes you picked, the pitches you picked were excellent. They sound good together. It works. Um, just follow that pulse. So in the 10-week block, um, it's, it can be a limited amount of time. So. For the most part, I focus on the, the C1 and the, the C2 expectations from the curriculum document. So the creating and performing and then um, the kind of reflective piece. Um, what I found most challenging was when we were 
when we were writing it down and having to find the right notes and which went with the other. And part of the curriculum asks that students um, become active listeners, so they listen for a specific purpose. So and that was sort of in the introductory lessons, that's what we would do. We'd listen to a particular piece of music, and they'd draw from that um, the bass line, or they'd think about the drum pattern or whatever that was. It was easy to do with a little bit of challenge, and um, it was fun to do. It wasn't like, oh, I have homework, and I have to, I have to, do, my, I have to do my work that I don't want to do, and it was fun to do. We get to brainstorm more uh, as opposed to doing yeah. it by yourself and having to think of it by yourself and we Working, come up with more yeah. ideas. I can assess them as a group and then eventually when they play all together, like in the beginning of the, the term, you can assess as a large group. So I think that's important to them too, um, especially for those students who have sort of a limited prior knowledge. I think it takes a bit of the, the pressure off. Their final culminating activity is the performance of the Rostinados for a group. And during this performance, they're actually evaluated by me um, on those elements of music that we kind of discussed earlier. So pitch and duration and tempo and that kind of thing. giving them feedback on what they're doing. Like, I like the way you do this, and maybe next time focus on this. So that feedback, I think, is, is crucial. And not only from, from me, but also from their peers. And I think that it builds a whole team atmosphere, too, of the, of the music class. So if it takes you two or three laps through his section, let him do it. Just find that pulse first. Don't be in a rush to get in there. It's good. Just relax. It's good. It's good. It's nice to see the ones who have a very limited understanding from the uh, the start to uh, to see them sort of on par with their peers who've been playing for a number of years. Good. Well done. Music is very important in my life. It's just something that I can just listen to and calm down if I'm upset or something. I know some of the students have referenced, you know, teachers who listen or teachers who are flexible or open to suggestion. And I, I think that that's key. If you want them to, to kind of stay with you for the next nine weeks, you need to engage them. And, um, you know, you talk to them about how you may not be able to do everything on their list, but you, you make an effort to to make it interesting for them. I think that's, that's key. Yeah, Miss Leyland uh, created a fun environment for us when she taught us the pieces of music and stuff. So it was very exciting to learn. <laughs>